Hey everyone, welcome back to Arrow Sentinels channel. And here is a quick um, semi unboxing, not a true unboxing. We're not going to go through the whole routine. We're just going to give you a quick preview of what's coming down the pipe with regards to um, gear. Uh, in this case is the ATN Thermal um, latest thermal scope by ATN. Um, which is their um, Thor 4, which is their fourth generation um, line. Um, this is one of their flagship, um, second to the highest model of their flagship um, thermal. So the ATN Thor 4 um, 2.5 by 25 HD um, thermal scope, which has the uh, dual core processor. Um, which is much faster than previous and um, as well as you know the newer obsidian they call it obsidian uh, for dual core processor um, so it has the latest uh, greatest processor in it it comes with a few things um, the which is standard um, the eyepiece the eye cup that helps with which is a great thing because it helps with um, controlling some of the light feedback from the um, uh, view screen so that way you're not exposing yourself for potential um, you know visibility to your prey or whatever but anyway yeah uh, and, and it's a great thing because it it actually screws on instead of just kind of snap into place which can tend to fall off uh from previous experience with other um, systems out there but with this one it screws into place and the plastic piece the rubber piece actually mounts with you know it kind of snaps in via two grooves um, which can be removed if you need to clean it or wash it or whatever the case but it can be removed but it is kind of nice and tight into that uh, little screw-in adapter and you just simply put it in just like how you see me doing um, it does uh, not come with a SD card so you have to get that um, on your own and it has a built-in battery unlike the previous models where um, it was uh, you know external type of battery um, it already has a built-in battery um, built in which is uh, 16 hour 20 hour battery life something like that which is great um, lasts fairly long um, and it comes with several mounting options uh, two standard and one L type with some Allen with, with the Allen key um, so we won't be using it in this case because we decided to get the optional quick disconnect uh, type of mount so I can transfer between um, rifle to rifle um, so here is the ABL 1000 uh, the lower of the two model um, that they offer one is the ABL 1500 which is capable of much higher range 500 more range capability which is 1500 yards or meters and this one is the abl 1000 which is 1000 range words that is a lot more than what we'll be utilizing utilizing it for um, because it is going on a rifle scope um, i mean a rifle air rifle type of um, um, uh, gun and so here is we're gonna quickly um set it into place with the um single type mount but you know we decided to go with the abl um 1000 although the scope itself the thermal optic itself comes with a uh, built-in rangefinder which is um 
a bit of a work to get it going. I mean, basically, you, it gives you, you tell, you tell that what is you, what are you trying to arrange? You give it a height. So you give it a measure on the top and you give it a measure on the bottom, which gives it an average height. And then it kind of gives you a, a appropriate um, calculation and a sort of algorithm that tells it, okay, you're, you're this range, you know. And I think that's kind of iffy. Um, it's accurate enough, I guess, uh, but it's a lot of work. By, by then, by the time, my prey could potentially be gone if I'm doing all of that. It's, it's, it's a task. It's a career. I don't want to have a to-do of a whole entire career before I can even um, put a lead down range to my target. I just want to simply click one click like a normal range finder and I'm done. I get my range. So with the ABL that makes that a lot more um, streamlined that process. Um, uh, simple. I like simple. So, um, you know, to see the ABL stands for auxiliary ballistic laser. So, you know, just makes everything with regards to life with your thermal scope a lot more pleasing instead of a task um so this is the quick disconnect mount um, we're kind of just getting it on there nice and snug and then tighten it down locking it into place we're not gonna um do too much with it but just to kind of give you an idea and it does come with a the, the thermal scope does come with a built-in inclinometer so that tells you um, your angle left or right and your um, forward or back uh, angle as well so um, you know gives you proper act um, the access um, axis I guess um, so tells you what sort of angle you're at uh, in degrees uh, left or right uh, forward or back so that tells you but here um, which isn't necessary but i'm just doing it here just to kind of give you folks an an idea you just basically it's 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 how you would mount your conventional um, um, scopes anyway so this is what i'm doing here um, it's not necessary this level is not necessary which i could just simply turn on the thermal scope itself because it has inclinometers that tells me okay i'm too much left too much right i'm angled too forward i'm angled too back and that sort of thing but here i'm just concerned left and right angles if i'm too much to the left or i'm too much to the right i just want to make sure i'm a little bit level I, and I do confirm that I turn it on and I you know they you don't see it on the video but that's why I, I typically do just to make sure that my crosshairs are on point you know with regards to left or right um, I just want to make sure I'm completely vertical and you know when I'm mounting it here I just want to make sure I snug all of my um, Allen bolts in crisscross pattern and then I tighten accordingly so that way I'm when I tighten one side I do it evenly a little at a time so that it doesn't pull the scope one if you tighten one side of the um, mount too easily and it'll start to shift one way or the other. So you, you want to make sure you just snug it evenly as much as possible. Um, cross section at a time and then move on to the other one. That's sort of deal. But um, you folks know the simple process more than likely. Um, so we'll cut some of the length to spare you folks some moment back into your lives instead of wasting your time viewing this mundane process but it's the same thing as you folks would do with a simple uh with the conventional uh, scope so that's all we're doing here and this scope is great um, you know if it works right but there's some glitches of course as their newer line and it's expected I didn't expect it to 
have a problem out of the box. So I wasn't actually surprised. And since I'm a electronics tech, I know what could be solved via firmware or not. Or um, some simple trick. So I, you know, I, I, I told tech support the issues and what I've done. And they said, oh, yeah, you've done everything. Uh, we, we'll take it back. We'll send you another one, which was great. It was a quick turnaround time. I mean, I shipped it via FedEx. And when they confirmed that I, um, you know, FedEx had it returned, they shipped one out my way without even receiving the product as long as they confirmed that there was, uh, you know, FedEx received the package. So it was great of them. I got I got them uh, within a um, couple of days, actually. So it comes with three different mounts for the Excite, the HD, and this one is the Thor 4. So, um, you know, use the one that um, pertains to your model type bus uh, optic. This, in this case, is the Thor 4 series. And... Um, this is the ABL 1000, which is good for 1000 yards. And in this case, I'm not going to be going. Um, and I'm using, um, it's not recommended, but I do just put a little bit of silicone, 100% silicone on the threads just to make sure it doesn't bind on me and be permanently stuck. Um, as I've experienced in some other, um, you know, uh, sunshade of scopes um, one point. Now, you know, when you've been doing this, uh, when you've been on the game for this long, you kind of know tips and tricks already. But in this case, I'm just making sure that the um, um, threads has some sort of uh, silicone uh, on them so that way you, you don't want to put too much um, just uh, a few little um, here and there just to kind of help with keeping it from binding so if you need to remove it at one point you can easily do it without the metals you know locking to one another when you got them snug or tightened because you know with with these type of metals, uh, they tend to bind at times, um, especially with the coating. Um, so, uh, because I know it can happen, that's the potentials, I just do it. And you just want to be careful with the amount that you put, so that way it doesn't get onto your um, expensive optics on the glass portion, you know, because that is something you don't want to do because that's a big no-no very hard to clean and potentially can uh, remove some of the um, coating but won't worry too much about them because yeah we think we are pros sometimes but <laughs> yeah anyway so it mounts this way you kind of you you need to kind of wedge it like wedge it open a little bit just to get them past that little area and there's a small little channel that a gr you want to align the groove with that with that sort of um uh, I, I don't know what it's called it's a an, it's an alignment aligning pin that you want to get to that groove to keep it from slipping in and out and then once you tighten the two allen sc allen screw or bolts on there it would just be stuck you won't move so that's all you really have to do basically so you kind of want to wedge it line it up how you like it um and it does makes it even more longer and bulkier so just be aware um i wish they had just built it into the system all in one the thermal scope don't get me wrong comes with a um, generic sort of uh, range finder which is uh, a bit tedious to work because it kind of gives you the averages um, it's accurate enough but it's a task to perform um, a range on it so I wanted simple use and 
you know, by the time I range uh, my prey, I could potentially lose my moment, you know, in putting down my prey. So, because basically what's built in as a built-in range finder and the scope, the way, it, uh, the, the thermal optics, the way it comes, is the built-in range finder. Um, you basically have to give it a click for the height, click, give it another click for the... Um, well, first you have to get it into the mode to range, right? And then you have to give it a click to give it a height and then another click to give it a, um, you know, the bottom. So it kind of gets that average and then it tells you, okay, this average for this prey is this distance and yeah that's questionable because you know what sort of average is it averaging averaging that thing on you know I, I don't know um that's questionable to me and i don't have that kind of time for majority of what i do as far as hunting um to go into the mode option f to range something and then click this click that and then it gives me a range and um, just nope that is too much work so here you saw me this this uh, abl 1000 there's the abl uh 1500 which is a a longer range type of um, laser this one um is more than enough for majority of people um so you saw me just put in a um, cr two battery that it it comes with um but you know it, it and it lasts long actually the battery um i've had them running and i've even forgot forgotten to even um turn it off at times and yeah it's 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 still good but i do have spare rechargeable types if i need to so here is uh i'm preparing to zero in my laser my, my abl to my thermal scope 